Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to continue from IS29, Financial Reporting in Hyperinflational Economies Part 2. Our focus will be on restating financial statements for hyperinflation. So to prepare a statement of financial position, a statement of profit or loss, and other compressive income OCI in a hyperinflationary economy, an entity needs to determine the impact of changes in the purchasing power and restate its comparatives. All right. So our purchasing power is measured as an index or a price index of inflation. To prepare this statement, there are four steps that we need to consider. The first step is to restate the statement of financial position at the beginning of the reporting period. Second step, to restate the statement of financial position at the end of the reporting period. Third step, to also restate the statement of profit or loss and OCI for the reporting period and and the first step is to calculate and separately disclose the gain or loss on the net or net reposition. So there will also be impact on the statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flows from this process. So you're going to see what is involved in each step. Looking at the first step, which is to restate the opening statement of financial position, we need to consider one that in the statement of financial position at the beginning of the reporting period, both the monetary and the non-monetary items are indexed up such that they are stated in the measuring units current at the reporting date and therefore reflects their purchasing power on the later date. Secondly, is that non-monetary items such as your property, plant and equipment inventory, they have been acquired many periods ago when the purchasing power of the currency was greater. Non-monetary items at the beginning of the reporting period are indexed up from the date of acquisition or contribution in the case of a share capital to reflect the purchasing power at the reporting date. However, if an asset or liability can be revalued, then it is indexed up only from the date of the most recent valuation. So for monetary items, that is money held and items to be received or paid in money uh, on any given date, always stated at their current purchasing power at that date. Therefore, the monetary items at the beginning of the reporting period also need to be indexed up to reflect the purchasing power at the reporting date, that is, the opening balance is increased by the change in the price index during the reporting period to reflect the fact that the assets had higher purchasing power at the beginning of the period. Then the change in the price index is calculated by dividing the index at the reporting date by the index at the beginning of the period. The second step is to restate the closing statement of financial position. So steps to consider here is that the statement of financial position at the reporting date is indexed up to the current purchasing power terms. Then because the monetary items are on any given date always stated at the current purchasing power at that date, it means that the monetary amount held at the reporting date do not require a restatement. So this is different from what we saw at the step one where we said um, monetary items are indexed up at the uh, opening period of the financial statement of position. But at the closing statement of financial position, this is not indexed up. Step C is the non-monetary items at the beginning of the period are already restated to reflect the purchasing power at the reporting date in accordance with step one above. Step three is to then restate the profit or loss and OCI. A hyperinflationary statement of profit or loss and OCI includes the gain or loss from holding monetary assets or liabilities and income and expenses during the period and the gain or loss from holding monetary assets or liabilities is included in profit or loss and any income earned or expense incurred during the period we need to be indexed up from the date initially recorded to reflect the purchasing power also at the reporting date. The next video is a practical example where we see restatement and how it reflects the purchasing power at the reporting date for an entity's financial statement. Alright, so thank you for watching and see you in that video. Bye.